This is a CPU mining rig, and it is no different to what you would find inside your PC you're watching on right now. But for CPU mining specifically, it needs to be undervolted and overclocked. So today we're gonna to show you how to do that. What is up guys? My name is Chris from Bear Market Mining, and I have been CPU mining for about four years now. And in that time, let me tell you, have I done some learning. Overclocking and undervolting CPUs is not as straightforward as we would like, but in today's video, I'm gonna take you through exactly how to do that effectively, efficiently, and nice and easily. We'll take a 7950X CPU mining rig from stock settings, we'll undervolt it, and then we'll check what hash rate readings and power readings we can get. And let me tell you, with these undervolts, it is super, super efficient and easy to do. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So we're gonna start with our stock settings. So this is no undervolts, no boost clocks, nothing has been touched, just bare bones, which means it will run at full power and uh, we'll see exactly how much hash rate we can get out of this. So we've just started the miner up. We're using random X, one of the most common CPU mining algorithms. We can see everything has utilized, it's up. And if we refresh, we should start to get temperatures. So no hash rate yet, but instantly you see 85C. Now that's too hot to run consistently. These will thermal throttle at around 90 degrees Celsius. You don't want to be up in those temps so we will be fixing all of that a little bit later but we can see straight away 20 kilohash which is about what you would expect out of this unit now the full power it's running at the wall at the moment is 330 watts so that's what's uh what's causing this temperature to really spike you get the gist here um, i don't want to run it too long and hit that 90 degrees celsius mark we've got a good baseline 330 watts and around 20 kilohash, you know, 19.9 uh, .9 to 20.1 or so I think we saw on there. So we'll take these stock settings. We'll now jump on into the BIOS, apply our undervolts and see exactly what we can do. Now that we have a baseline hash rate and power wattage reading for this miner, we can start to undervolt our BIOS and in turn reduce our power and heat on our CPU. So there will be a number of different settings in here that will be useful to you and a number of different ways to reduce that power and heat. I will leave chapter names underneath everything. So if you're not new to this and you're just looking for a specific part, you'll be able to read through the chapters, and figure out exactly what you need to do. If it's your first time, I suggest watching it all the way through. That way you can maximize your efficiency as much as possible and get your CPU rig up and mining. So we'll start very basic here. This is one of the first things you should do every single time, and that's tweak your fan control. Now, there's a number of ways you can do this. Again, you can set yourself a curve on the way up so that as the temperature goes up, the fan increases, or like I've done, you can just click full speed and have them running constantly. Now, depending on your environment, it might save you a few watts here or there if you set your own fan curve. Otherwise, full speed is gonna be the best bet, and that's what everyone does, I have always done, just to keep those CPUs as cool as possible. This will in turn increase your longevity, stop the risk of thermal throttling, and you'll have an all out better experience with mining the cooler the CPU is. My second quick recommendation before we start the undervolting will be to restore your AC power after it turns off. So this basically means just by clicking on the power supply button on and off, you can turn the miner on. You don't need to start a, uh, a power cable to get it running, or you don't need to do the dodgy, uh, put a screwdriver onto the two power pins. This way, when you turn it off, you turn off the power. To turn it back on, you simply click that power. The miner will start up. So a really, really easy way just to save you a little bit of hassle turning this thing on and off. Next up, let's enable that XMP or overclock your RAM. So on this particular RAM that I'm using, 
Uh, it's capable of 6,000 megahertz, but without overclocking the RAM, it will run at its stock megahertz rate, which is around 4,800. This is really important with CPU mining, enabling your XMP or overclocking your RAM will give you a little more hash rate. Now, it will also use a little more power, but in my experience, the power that you increase with the hash rate that you increase is definitely well worth it. But maybe try start by having it on, having it off, checking your hash rate, checking your power and deciding what is the best option for you. So now let's start by talking about undervolting this CPU. So basically what we're doing by undervolting is we're reducing the amount of power that it's drawing, but still keeping that boost clock high. So the very simple and easiest way to do it is to use an eco mode. So for this particular build, I'm using eco mode 105 watts. So this is just gonna reduce that power draw and hopefully keep our hash rate at the same. Again, you can go down to 65 watts. Some lower power CPUs even have a 45 watt option, but this will be the very place you should start if you have this option on your motherboard. Eco mode's a really, really easy way to do it, and it's almost purpose designed just to do this. Unfortunately, it isn't available on every motherboard, but we will move on to a couple of other ways you can continue to undervolt if you don't have eco mode available. Your second option for undervolting is an old school actual undervolt. So you'll need to go into your CPU, into your AI tweaker or your CPU settings, and you'll find something called your CPU core voltage. Now this obviously will be set at auto. So this means that by the requirements that you're using on the CPU, it will spike up and down with the voltage and in turn increase or decrease your power. But we wanna get that number down as low as possible. So this particular motherboard sits at around 1.2 to 1.3 volts by stock, and then can spike up and down uh, as it goes along. You wanna take that auto and you wanna click it onto manual mode or override mode, whatever it says on your CPU. Good way to start by doing this will be to start at around a 1.1 or a 1.15 voltage on your CPU and work your way down. Some CPUs, and I've had this before, don't like to be undervolted. They will start to crash as you get lower and lower on your voltage. So start up a little bit higher and work your way down. You can aim for a one volt even undervolt. That will be a pretty good place to start. People can get down to 0 0.95, 0 0.975, but this is gonna be silicon lottery. The best way to do it will to be start higher work your way down. As soon as you hit a number and it starts crashing, just pick that back up and work your way back to find that sweet spot. So this is your most traditional way of undervolting your CPU. Another option if you are, don't have you know, the eco modes available or the next mode that we're gonna talk about now. Now, the last option, if you don't wanna use the eco mode or you don't want to do a core undervolt, and adjust your PBO limits. So we can see here on the screen, there's three different readings, all in different measurements or increments. We've got the PPT limit, the TDC limit, and the EDC limit. Now this can sound very confusing, but basically this is just controlling your power draw on the CPU and board as well. You don't need to know too much about this to be able to do this successfully. I would suggest the best way to do it would be to take a screenshot of it, Put it into ChatGPT, tell ChatGPT, I want a target wattage on my system, put in the system specs of, let's say 150 watts, and it will spit out these numbers. Now, these numbers match my eco mode, which keeps us at about 150 or so, 170 watts. So ask ChatGPT or do some more research. Again, maybe ask it to do a soft limit or somewhere in the middle, work your way up or down on the power. But I have had to use this before. Some of my other uh, motherboards don't have the voltage control on them. So this is the last way that you'll be able to really reduce that power. So now that we have gone through our three different ways of reducing the power on our board and increasing the efficiency, last but not least, the next sort of undervolt quote unquote will do 
is to uh, reduce the curve optimizer. So this again is going to draw that power down. So basically the way you want to go is as low as possible. Minus 30 or negative 30 is about as low as I've ever been able to go. Maybe start at a minus 15, then to a minus 20, then to a minus 25. And again, the same with the undervolts. The best way to know if it's working or not check your power meter, check your hash rate. And of course, if it's not working, it will crash. An optional extra to increase a little bit of performance is to use things like the Asus Performance Enhancement. Now, this again will be specific to your motherboard, some of them called Asus Overdrive. This is basically just increasing the boost clocks, but because you're reducing that power limit, shouldn't necessarily increase power too much. So again, test this on or off, see what you like, see what the power readings and the efficiency mean and make a decision whether this is the best option for your specific CPU rig. So with all of those recommendations gone through, there isn't really much else you would need to worry about as far as undervolting or increasing efficiencies. If you're advanced at this, there might be a few extra tweaks you can do with other settings, but I would recommend sticking with these options if get all these options into the sweet spot, there's not much more you're going to be able to do as far as efficiency. At that point, we'll be talking, you know, maybe a percentage point here or there. And if you don't know exactly what you're doing, it's probably not best to go messing with too many of the other settings. Now with our eco mode set, our curve optimizer and the Asus performance enhancement alongside with our overclocked XMP or our RAM, let's check out what readings we get now. Looking now at some of the stats and how it compared to before, we're getting again right around 20 kilohash, so not much has changed there, which is great because we have undervolted that and reduced a ton of power down from 332 down to 178. So it's about a 150 watt drop, about 45%, so a huge, huge difference from stock settings. And that's why we can see that these uh, these temperatures, 51 degrees as opposed to 90 degrees, are much, much better. 52 on the CPU. So not only have we saved a ton of power, almost half, we're getting the exact same hash rate as we were before. So this is a huge advantage of undervolting. And you can do this on all different types of CPUs. It isn't just a 7950X. You can do it on any of your gaming PCs. Obviously, some of the settings in the motherboard will be slightly different, but hopefully you've got a few different ways to uh, to tackle that now after looking at those BIOS settings. So that is going to wrap up our undervolting or overclocking tutorial, whichever way you want to look at it. Some really, really good results we got out of this 7950X. And remember, you can do this on any CPU with the right electricity rate and the right undervolt. You can turn so many CPUs or gaming rigs that you've got right now into profitable crypto miners. Now, if you need any more assistance, there is a link to Discord down in the description. We have a dedicated channel regarding CPU mining. Lots and lots of very smart people on there who are happy to help you out. So make sure you join that. If you like the video, make sure you hit that like button for me and consider subscribing for more crypto mining content. Catch you in the next one. Peace.